So completely driven by nostalgia, I made a point to come back to this gem of my childhood. And normally I'd be quick to buy these old games, but I'ma uh I'ma let these prices speak for themselves. And uh yeah. It's about a hundred dollars for the cartridge alone. Alright, but all jokes aside, man, I just think it's crazy because you know, dude, these people like low key are finesse and you gotta pay a hundred dollars for the cartridge, you gotta pay another million dollars for the case. And they probably ain't even including like the stuff that comes inside the case. You gotta buy the art for the case, man. I understand, man. I know the hustle is real, man. Coming out of bro, bro, come on, man. I mean, you know, can't have nothing in Detroit, man. No sir. So yeah. I mean, I enjoy the series, but I honestly think it's just crazy how much like scalpers and all those other things have just driven up the value of these games. Now, I know that they're a little bit older, so it's like, okay, cool. But at the same time, it's kind of just like, nobody trying to spend a million dollars for the... Bro, all right, y'all y'all understand the point. So the ultimate question that I wanted to ask, though, was are these games worth playing in 2022? That's exactly where I'm speaking at this moment. So, I mean... Me personally, I suggest y'all pick up a version of this game legally. And yeah, let's jump into this, man. So the professor asked me what my name was, and I'm not gonna lie, I took an absurd amount of time answering that, man. I was like, I didn't know if I wanted to go with my government name, my YouTube name, or just something that sounds like menacing, you know? Like imagine if some guy was like, yo, that guy Sub-Zero just caught a kitten. I mean, a cure -em. Hey, look, man, something about Sub-Zero just screams Black Air Force energy, dude. And not to mention, man, me and me and Sub-Zero, man, we got, like, that's my guy. Especially against weak people like Noob, Saibot, but that's for another video. If you know, you know. I'm not gonna lie, when it comes to my rival, I named dude John Wick. There's not really a reason behind it, but it just, it just also sounds menacing. If I'm gonna have a menacing name on my character, I gotta also give my rival a menacing name, too. I can't be out here with a name like Sub-Zero on my rival got a name like Salty Breadsticks 416 So after some cutscenes and dialogue, aka my worst enemy, the real rival of the game, I was asked the question of all questions. Stealing John Wick's baby sister's kitten is crazy. What type of plot armor Team Plasma got, man? I honestly need whatever they got. So like I said, man, after going against the real antagonist of the game, cut scenes and dialogue, man. I eventually got my Snivy. I had no idea what I wanted to name it. I eventually named it Sleeves. Don't ask where that came from, because to be honest, bro, I have no idea. So look, moreover, lots and lots and lots of cut scenes and dialogue and tutorials later, we are finally getting somewhere. And bro, I'm not gonna lie, I did speed the game up. Because look, if you play any of the older DS games, you know how slow the games move. Plus, I mean, like I said, man, my worst enemy is already dialogue, cutscenes, tutorials, man. It sets you up for failure. I talked with Alder, I battled some trainers, and yeah, now we're in process. So I'm not gonna lie, my main goal is to use mines I normally never use. See, I bet you're wondering, this is the tutorial, how did you lose? I've gotta say, I guess the world is just never gonna know. Anyways, I went back, got my rematch, Gave bro his map. I mean, like I said, my main thing was using mines that I've never used before. So leaving Flossessi without a Riolu or a Mareep is really, really going to hurt. But in the long run, hopefully it will be rewarding. I went to Alders, did some battles. Bro, yo, this little metal dude, how did he find me? I ran at light speed over to the first gym, packed up these little trainers, got my badge, and I got up through. Funnily enough, at this point, I was just chilling only to get caught up in so Or dialogue oh man at this point man i was very close to verbank the only thing standing in between me and verbank was some random hiker guy at the top of this staircase and bro had to go so look so after my battle with the hiker guy i was taught how to use darker grass i was also taught how that works because i'm a beginner anyways the chat with karen and john wick went and gone and yeah 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 and finally we set off towards verbank there was a captain guy who seemed to be having problems that I really don't have time for, so I'm not even gonna divulge in that mess because I know that he leads to the Pokestar Studios. I'm not gonna lie, the Pokestar Studios is up there with being like top 10 worst enemies in the game, like people you really gotta look out for, the real antagonist. So a phone call and some dialogue out, I stocked up on some Pokeballs because I had the intention to go and pick up another member of my team. I went down to the Verbank work area, caught myself a Magnemite, named him Sparkplug. And believe it or not, he was actually hard to catch. I harassed some essential workers, did a little bit of training, and then I was off to Verbank Gym, which I might add was relatively a breeze with Sparkplug. But like I said earlier, now we're off to my favorite part of the game. If you can't tell, I'm being extremely sarcastic. The Pokestar Studios, and man, oh man, I'll just save y'all the pain and struggle I had to go through. 
and I'll see y'all when it's over. Did I tell you how the sleeves evolved? Not to mention, man, we had the biggest showdown with a bunch of Team Plasma people. Me and John Wick got to participate in the ultimate game of hide and go seek, and once that was done and over with, we went back to the captain's spot, then we set off to Castellia. So while navigating through Castelli, I came across this building with trainers, got my hands on an XP divider and ran at light speed over to the gym. And to my surprise, bro wasn't even there. So what I did was follow Iris until I was volunteered into going on a recon scout mission in the sewers. I felt as though my Pokemon career might have been in jeopardy at this point because low key I was thinking to myself, nah, I don't have the plot armor for this. I made a quick stop at the center for repels and went back to the sewers with John. You know, it's kind of funny because as I'm like thinking, I'm reading this and I, I'm still just, yeah, the sewers is a no-go for me, man. And I mean, like I said, y'all ain't really miss much. It was a goose chase. I mean, me and uh, John Wick ran into some other sewage dwellers and then we found some plasma people along with this other random lady who was inside this room. But anyways, like I said before, man, I don't got time for this. I'm not the police. So I kept it moving. I pushed through the trainers. So uh, this man, Bert, was waiting around in the darkness, waiting for his time. He was camping with Chorus, but he coincidentally missed the filler arc. But that's okay, because now we can go to the gym. Normally, I will not let that slide, but just, just for today, all right, it's, it's cool. But now we get into the real way. This is just the beginning. Hunting for an Eevee. I felt like I was looking for a shiny while I was looking for just a regular Eevee. It was almost as if this man Eevee was like a professional hider. Loki, I was thinking to myself as I was looking for bro, I was like starting to like ponder if like does this mind even exist? Is Eevee even like a real thing or is it just a figment of my imagination? Man, that's the side effects of dwelling in the sewers, man. It was almost like I was looking for gold or something. But I can't stress this enough. That man's hiding skills was no match for me breaking the speed of sound barrier. It's kind of wild because, you know, I was, uh, as I was looking, I ended up pulling up the um, spawn rate. I think it was something like 5%. It was really low. I didn't realize it was that rare, but whenever I eventually did find my EV, I named him Solar Flare. Now, I mean, Solar Flare is extreme foreshadowing. If you still haven't been able to figure out what typing I'm going to be able to give, bro. But it's fine. If you still haven't got, if you haven't picked up the hand, it's all right, bro. You're going to figure out eventually, I hope. So pretty much, I kind of put sleeves and solar filler onto the bench and let that man spark plug carry me through the gym he earned the uh, mvp title of this section of the game i kind of just put everybody else up you know what i mean man but i mean all was well though because I mean, magnemite you know he did his thing in the gym magnemite did his thing but it kind of didn't help that i didn't have no specific typings that was good for bugs specifically so i kind of just went headstrong into it and just hope for the best but i mean you know it's it's cool though because everything ended up working out all right anyways got that mess out the way took her some more problems you know got me some uh pokey dollars and i was on to catch my next team member i called me a little trap pinch named him swarm and before y'all got into the comments i don't want to see no fly guy slander yes garchomp is goaded but look man we gotta give we gotta give fly guy time to shine man hey look speaking from personal experience i know that fly guy is tired of sitting on the bench man so look I named him Swarm when I was thinking about Flygon. I, I didn't really look at Lil Bro in his first form and just count him out. You know, I'm going to give him time to grow into a dragon, man, you know? I mean, in his first form as Trap Inch, his name don't really match him, but he's going to grow into it. It's going to be fine. It's going to be perfect. I also called me a Sigilif. Something about his design is just visually appealing. I mean, when you see all these colors going on, me personally, whenever I first played through this game, I thought he was a you know. I ended up getting me a Firestone, so Solar Flare is a Flareon now. And I mean, you know, just being in the desert resort for so long just completely disoriented my time. So I packed some trainers up and went on my way. To be honest, it was a pretty straightforward journey alongside with some filler arcs and just garbage. But you know, I mean, you gotta go through the trash to get to the good or something like that, man. But look, a part of what's good about the desert resort is I was able to catch me a Braviary. And honestly, I, I forgot about Braviary. I hate to say I shelved them, but I shelved them. It's been, it's been quite some time. I ain't gonna slander my man Braviary like that. But I mean, I got... I, but, you know, I just got to be honest. I threw him into the box. It ain't no disrespect, but, hey, he's happy in there, I hope. I ended up leaving the desert resort and headed up to Joint Avenue. It's super weird being in here, though, now that it's a ghost town. I remember me and my cuz playing Black and White, too, when the games first came out. And it just used to be super packed. I mean, like, people would have NPCs walking around everywhere. And if I remember correctly, these NPCs, they would, like, have... They would set up shop, and you could do different things. You could interact with them, basically. But if I remember correctly, though, this was, like, way back in 2012. And it's, what, 2022 now as I'm recording this? But look, for real, for real, I say all that to say. It's just kind of like a weird ghost town. It's eerie, kind of like that mall I went to in one of my older videos. It just is weird going into this place where you knew it was kind of, like, 
super lively at one point now it's just dead like because everything is offline i was gonna say i don't believe that the servers are down but i do believe there's still like a couple black and white too and black and white servers that are still up but i say a cool 95 percent of people that used to play don't play no more but upon entering them boxes i ended up going back to the old gym and to be completely honest i completely disregarded the yancey quest line and before people are like oh well you could get some cool trades i had already figured out what i wanted my team to be so i just was like nah but anyways i had to battle a whole bunch of rich people which was great for the xp or the grind but you know it ended up being cool though because after i defeated the last trainer in the old gym i went over to the new gym and realized that i was like extremely under level low key it almost cost me the battle though whenever i eventually did have to fight the gym leader but i mean you know it was all cool it ended up working out swarm came in clutch hey that clutch kind of it came at a cost though man spark plug had to take multiple for the team but hey what what don't kill you make you stronger i i guess but like i said though man me and the homie john wick ran into a couple of team plasma people we packed them up i discovered a hidden grotto this dude trying to get something to change the whole battle game if only the cost wasn't blocking the whole bridge though because hey man i mean there's so many side quests that i do not feel obligated to do but but like i said man dude started spitting ig quotes and rode off into the sunset anyways i kind of just chilled out lingered around and gained some xp while making a few pit stops the homie spark plug evolved into a magneton i thought that was interesting and then i crossed the Jeffvale drawbridge and it was here that i picked up another team member i grabbed me a ducklet and named him duck season then i made my way on the Jeffvale where me and john wick were run into an x team plasma member and a present team plasma member look it got confused and it was just a whole lot of team switching going on but hey i say all that to say if you if you lost right now i was too when i first played but man i mean you know basically it was a lot of team switching going on and the homie john wick wasn't cool with it which he kind of right he had the right to not be cool because i mean they stole his i came up on a zora which i thought was dope because it was like low-key unintentional i had forgotten that rook offers you one but hey I ended up having to battle him. He went on to tell his life story, which which was dope, but I, I really wasn't here for all that. But hey, that is crazy. And aside from that, man, it was pretty much just training on Route 6. I had to do a whole lot of grinding because at this point, I realized just how far it seemed I was till my team was top of the food chain. But I mean, you know, it's cool, man. All right, so in Conquest of Training, I made an effort just to raise a few of my team members' levels to 30. With that being said, I decided to go ahead and challenge the Driftvale Gym. So per usual, I went on a traverse through the maze and I did end up fighting Clay. But there was a plot twist i ended up losing but that is not the end though i went back later on and challenged them and made more logical decisions and ended up winning the stuff i did on my first run through it it wasn't very like thought out i kind of was just trying to fly through it a little bit but because i wasn't as over leveled as what i thought i was bro it caught up to me. i ain't gonna lie i thought i was gonna just be able to fly through bro but i forgot duck season was part flying type but I mean, you know, it's done and over with. I ended up traveling up Route 6 and did a few side quest things. One of those things being fooling around in this lab where they was experimenting on Daryl. I've got to say, one thing I enjoy about Gen 5 is like the atmosphere of the game. It's 2D, but it really has like its own vibe to it, you know? I did some more training. Zora went on to evolve, which was dope because I mean, I'm slowly but surely getting my team to a central point of level 30. I don't know about y'all, man, but when my minds are all around the same level, it's just, it's a level of satisfaction that comes with it. It's almost like an equilibrium state. And oh man, the hours that you have matched training definitely creeps up on you. You blink and somehow you've been playing for a few hundred hours. Like what is going on? I made a quick stop at Charge Stone Cave to get a quick evolution. That evolution being spark plug. After getting that out the way, I went and hung out at the Pokemon Tournament Arena. Participating in a few battles between both Karen and Chorus. Once we got that out the way, John Wick, Karen, and I wandered into the Plasma Headquarters. Zenzelin stepped out of the dark corner he had been camping in, and to make a long story short, we got evicted off the Plasma Boat. After reaching the sense of normalcy, I once again traveled up Route 6, and I set my mind to train the Swarm to evolve. But while doing that, I ran into the legendary Cobalion, which has a vertical light of this world, might I add. That man has mastered the art of Skyrim fast travel. But then this elderly dude and Rook just so happened to be within walking distance from, I mean, you know, plot armor or something. And he basically came and gave me a whole background as to why this was such a big deal. In addition to that, now it's time to go through Charstone Cave for real this time. I don't really mind Charstone. It isn't like the Seafoam Island Caves or that dark cave in Fire Red, but I digress though because it's the journey and immersion that's dope. I had some trainer battles which pretty much handled themselves. Before I left Charstone, I had made the decision to go back to Route 6 because I really had my mind set on Swarm Evolving. So I did just that. So after maneuvering through Charstone, I reached Mistralton. 
and it was smooth sailing from there i talked with skylar and then did a bit of training there were people hiding in the tall grass i packed them up and headed for celestial tower route 7 had a whole lot of trainers it felt like much more than usual it might just be the editing though who knows but to be completely real i was fiending for some xp so much to the point to where i was willingly battling trainers intentionally that's pretty much unheard of for somebody like me man i had even tried to go up to twist mountain which was a mistake though because i was told i couldn't pass through now with the filler arc out of the way i continued to celestial tower i did a whole lot of trainer battles went to the top and realized i wasn't supposed to be up there just yet but for real for real though this is just another one of those instances where the atmosphere of these games shouldn't be disregarded because although severely limited this game had a lot of it had a lot poured into it so much so to the point to where even the little things made such an impactful difference the top of the tower seems like a place where like a character would go and start monologuing or something look here check me out i'm gonna try to be edgy for a second uh nah hey bro that ain't gonna fly i feel like i'm auditioning to be batman or something but to be completely honest, those are the type of people that I expect to be atop the Celestial Tower, though. Like, y'all can't lie, that's the vibe I pick up from this place, man. And this is just some honorable mentions I have forgot to mention. So sleeves had evolved and so had duck season. It kind of went way over my head, but I hadn't realized it until after the fact. So yeah, that was that too. You know, it's kind of funny because with spark plug alone, this gym wasn't really a problem at all. I won't go as far as saying it was easy, but to put it simply, this was probably the fastest I've ever cleared through a gym. Not to mention spark plug was slightly under level. You won't really see it as much, but the only challenge in this gym was pretty much like the air dynamic. And what I mean by that is pretty much every time I got close to being able to fight Skylar, bro, I would get pushed back by the air. So it was pretty much a repetitive loop. And until I broke out of that loop, man, it just was suffering. But I got Skylar out the way and I proceeded to claim my sixth gym badge. But like what's so great about this game is even though I'm relatively close to getting all the gym badges, it seems as if there's just constantly, there's a lot of side quests you could do. You know, you don't have to necessarily go straight through the game. You could kind of make multiple points of stopping it. Just taking a moment to just kind of take everything in. But anyways, I went up to Route 7 and it was funny because I had gotten this game mixed up with the first one because I had swore up and down that it was going to be a weather event for either tornadoes or thunders. Because of that, I braced myself for nothing, basically. The route was smooth sailing because I had cleared it out before I was actually supposed to. I farmed up on some XP from a couple of Idanos and kept it pushing, even though I eventually reached the top of Celestial Tower once again. But this time, no character dialogue. I just rang the bell a couple times and then retreated back down. I instant transmissioned over to the airport where I claimed my free plane ride over to Lenimus Town, accompanied by the one and only professor and... Bianca who materialized out of nowhere but I'm not gonna ask any questions because every time I do stuff progressively gets worse upon reaching Lenimus town we pretty much got a whole lot of information about the legendary dragons that the professor and Karen were research I splurged and cashed out at the Poke Center store after playing older games it was kind of weird having to readjust to the Pokemart being inside of the center you know because in gen 5 it was a new mechanic for the mart to be inside the center but yeah I got that out the way and the scenery of Lenimus makes me want some cold fountain sprite this place just looks dehydrated. Like that feeling you get when you wake up in the middle of the night and drink that life-changing water. Y'all know what I mean? I made a quick stop at the ghost house and I immediately turned around. That was the end of that. This is not a move, but it is. I have been given the ultimate objective of maneuvering through a Yosemite volcano while active with Bianca. Or to translate that, free heal and an XP. What's understood does not have to be explained. And I'll see y'all when I make it out of here. And I can't stress this enough, there's nothing like wandering around inside of an active volcano. That's got to be child endangerment or something, right? Lucky for Professor Juniper and Professor Oak, I'm not the police. I just kind of had like a flashback to all the old clickbait videos I used to watch where I swore up and down that Groudon could be inside this pit and reverse a mountain, man. I was beyond disappointed like I imagined a whole lot of y'all was. But like Thanos said, man. Reality is often disappointing. But yeah, man. He trained who? But yeah, I kind of did a lot of wandering around. I got a whole lot of XP out of here. And now it's time to leave, which is exactly what I did. And I finally arrived at Undella, which kind of feels unreal because the pace in the white two and black two seem like a lot less linear. Or in other words, it's a it seems like it's a whole lot more to explore. Now, if you're if you're anything like me, you probably made that same mistake of wandering into the wrong summer house. And in that summer house was the one and only champion from the Sinnoh region. You don't know pain until you wandered into that house and that theme starts playing it hits you like a train bro I'm, i just i ain't even gonna say what's understood does not have to be explained i've honestly never made such a drastic mistake in my life it was almost as if 
the destruction and pain caused by that Garchomp wasn't enough in Platinum. So instead of retiring, Cynthia decided to hop on a boat and follow us to Unibu. I was traveling up Route 14 and I think I got caught in the Genjutsu. It was a lot of fog and some old lady materialized and I was fearing for my life. In the midst of me fearing for my life, I realized all she wanted was a Pokemon battle. After that, it just was more I don't know grinding. The rustling grass in this game was for sure a clutch. It saved me so much time. Billions and billions of hours of the entire player base i imagine grinding is fine until you set up and a whole day has flown past but yeah i kept pushing forward and i encountered an interesting sight for sure these npcs have got to go and i think that that guy just broke the fourth wall i gotta go i absolutely grinded the mess out of swarm as i figured it was time flygon will be pretty useful right about now Oh, and there we have it, finally swarmed the Flygon. And in typical me fashion, I dropped at least 5,000 saves right then and there. It was no joke. I did a bit of running around and something clicked in my head and I just was thinking like, yo, these trainers are surpassing me and catching up. This guy handed me some ancient ocean artifacts and I just... Hey man, okay, these is going straight to the Pawn Star dudes. But look, they trying to turn Solar Flare into a suicide bomber and I respectfully decline. What do they mean by last resort? And like I said earlier, man, I can't stress this enough. These trainers are getting up there in numbers for sure. Oh, and there's a Cobalion again. Did I catch it? No. Not yet, not yet indeed. And I finally made it to Lacanosa Town after what felt like one billion business days. And this elderly lady gave a very clear warning to stay away from the dragon made out of ice. And you know what I was planning on doing? Going and investigate. I bought all the lemonade stock out of this vending machine. Me and John Wick bowed it out with some plasma goons and we packed them up. They even complimented us, telling us we are our past selves, the trainers from two years ago. I'm about to end this man's whole career on my way to Overloose City. I made a point to stop and talk to some NPCs because on the rare occasion, they'll have something super random random but extremely useful so yeah route 11 it is more trainers got packed up and dropped off but they're just side quests so they don't even matter look at this man he really think he cardi i mean alder yeah verizian ain't getting caught yet either i'm gonna just leave the legendaries for after i beat the game i made it to Overlucid. i was once again greeted by iris and headed out for the Overlucid gym dude those dragons were tough it got to a point to where i blacked out because i wasn't playing very strategically and i wasn't playing as if i had brain cells but yeah them dragons and them veterans was nothing but smoke. There was no preparation other than grinding that could have prepared me for those battles. Imagine standing up on these statues in real life. Like, what if somebody loses their balance? They just, uh, they just kind of dead. And, uh, yeah. As I was battling Drayden, I realized that I may just have more plot armor than I give the writers credit for. Dude, all of Drayden's minds were complete heavy hitters. Man, it was like all of my poor minds were taking hits from Prime Mike Tyson. They was just dropping anvils on some Looney Tunes type stuff on my poor team, dude. But like I said, I won just by the skin of my teeth and a little bit of plot on it was super close to going wrong though but hey a win is a win if only I could see the amount of saves and saving I've been doing but to be honest it don't even matter man because I'm up now I know I see the pokey dollar count my team and I are doing well inside this mall I did some stocking up on different pokeballs and other little things in preparation of the future to be honest I just low-key wanted a loaded bag too I went back to open lucid and followed Drayden and he pretty much told me all about curing splicers too. Zenzelin and the plasma people armed the ship and started shooting ice beams at us, but in typical villain fashion, they had to get out and converse about their evil plans, I guess. I was pretty much recruited for another search mission with Karen to find the missing plasma people. And I mean, this ain't really got nothing to do with it. shouldn't have even been what I was thinking about. But I just, man, I just couldn't help but think about, like, what are their gas rates looking like? How much how much does it cost to put gas into that flying Dutchman? Hey, maybe it don't even run off gas. It might just be electric, like a Tesla or something. So yeah, we eventually got that out the way. And I headed back to Undella and had a quick chat with John Wick. And he told me to take the Aqua too. And I ended up encountering this guy. Hey, Bro, if y'all seeing what this NPC just said, hey man, somebody need to check up on they bro. This guy's having a crisis down here. And welcome to Hammond Lao City. Now I'm on the quest for my final gym badge, and that is crazy to say out loud. I ran into Marlon, who seemed to be welcoming challengers, and I just wanted to take a second to acknowledge the map. In these games in particular, they had you all over the place, which I thought was dope. It doesn't feel as linear, like you're going in just a direct straight line path. This game was the full package. 
All right, so we officially enter Hamelau. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea if I'm butchering that, but we are surrounded by lots and lots of water. I navigated through the gym, and to be honest, sleeves and spark plug carried us all the way. Did a little bit of selling per usual, and it wouldn't really be as interesting if I didn't sell. It keeps me on the verge of life. It keeps the stakes high, and uh, you are, you're on the edge of your seat. I mean, it's a win-win. But anyways, Marlon came back from the Bermuda Triangle with info on Team Plaza, so you know what that means. Me and John Wick headed straight for Route 22. There's plenty, and I mean plenty of ocean surrounding. With that being said, I set off into the open seas. I passed through and eventually hit Seaside Cave. And per usual, I packed up one billion sea trainers. I kept it moving and my team and I were on a mission, man. That mission involved moving giant boaters. Whoever had left these boaters was just a menace to society. Those were some complete menace activity. But I proceeded through the cave and I woke up a crustle from his hibernation. I went outside to John Wick and it was here that Marlon let it be known that Team Plasma was not his problem. That's the path I wanted to take, but unlike Life is Strange, man, I was not giving that option. So what I did instead was I played my cards trespassed onto this boat. But it's okay because, I mean, they committed terrorism first. Their crime committed is worse than my crime committed. So basically, it's not a problem. It kind of like cancels itself out, if that makes any sense. Considering these plasma people got all this high-tech stuff on this ship, man, it was low-key, extremely easy to maneuver around. Like, you would think they would just have a little bit more security in place, considering that this is a high-level operation. But I ran around and the team plasma goons were ever so kindly to hand over the secret passwords into their base of operations. I mean, it's not like the dragon of legend is just chilling in a fish tank right in front of us, but yeah. I ran into Zenzelin and another guy, but I mean, he was unnamed. His name didn't really matter. He was a filler. Yeah, and like I said, man, we just chatted it up until eventually we got evicted off the flying boat and they blasted off into space wherever they was going off to. But I mean, I, I just, I have a really hard time understanding how we ended up losing them in the first place. I mean, I would imagine a giant gray flying ship wouldn't be hard to find, but you know, due to continuity and plot armor, I'm just, I'm not gonna be a skeptic that destroys the immersion and the fun. I wanna say that they headed towards the Chasm, so I made a few pit stops at Undella and Lacanos. I grabbed a few things from the Mart and I left. I left Hamelau and continued for the Chasm for real this time. I had to drop not one, but quite a few saves in typical meat fashion. So me and the homie John infiltrated the Chasm. There was some plasma people gatekeeping the passageway. Me and John Wick almost unleashed our wrath upon our guy. What I mean by that is our agent, if you will our ex-team plasma member. We walked out of the cave and we encountered something of a revolution going on. Rook and his people were actually going at it with the real team plasma members and some type of way I got dragged into it. So as usual, I had to pack up some plasma goons and they had a lot of minds you'd expect them to have. One of the reasons I low-key liked this game a little bit more than the first one that came out was because it like mixed older generation minds with the newer ones, you know? It was like a nice little combination of both Gen 5 and the previous generations too. So it didn't get to, I mean, to be honest, a lot of the, the plasma people had similar minds, but at least there was some variety to it too, you know? So once I got that out the way, I had to do a little bit of maneuvering to actually get where I was headed, which was Team Plasma's Flying Dutchman. Luckily, I had had some Olympic ice skating skills on hand and uh yeah I mean it was pretty much okay and I made my way onto the ship might I add the ship was filled to the maximum capacity with trainers so in other words many many battles laid ahead of us it was honestly a little bit interesting because these battles were challenging enough to a casual player such as myself but the mind roster was pretty diversified as I mentioned earlier it was a nice little combination of minds that had been fully evolved and it was a lot of middle stages and beginner stages they were slacking on their evolutions but they were not slacking in level a lot of the team plasma minds had a consistent level range they had been in not to mention I also made another realization too a lot of their team rosters had they had a lot of good chipping strategy like a lot of their minds were built to chip at your armor slowly but surely so it was like the damage didn't seem like much but over time if you wasn't paying attention and you didn't heal on a consistent basis it was like it would catch up to you take poison damage for instance you know that i mean after long enough poison could be a nightmare so anyways my agent came in clutch and gave me intel about the way the switches work on the ship and it's just crazy that i'm just in the enemy's lair like this i mean to literally be infiltrating their base of operations that's something that i can't even think about but to make matters worse you have a lot of these trainers who have like beginner stage pokemon but if they actually took the time to evolve them they could have some dangerous little minds tucked away in their little arsenal like take for instance one of these team plasma people had a Dino. I mean, if you had an army of high dragons, you don't even need to go kidnap Kurum. You know what I'm saying? That's a nightmare within itself, but I say that to say there's just plenty of potential, and if my character had an evil arc, we could get Team Plasma off the ground and going for real. So, uh, per usual, I had to just do a whole lot of puzzle maneuvering and just kept flipping the switches until something worked. That's my that's my motto, man. If it's broke, just keep flipping the switches till something works. So, after I got all that out the way, 
me and Zinzalink met once again. But this time, we really going to war for on the ship. And man, I can't stress this enough. My poor team has been going through it. Like these little battles I've been brushing off, they've been taking their toll on my team, man. Everyone is so high level now. I feel like these games move relatively fast, which is kind of controversial because a lot of people complain that they don't move fast enough. Little does the game know, man. No matter how fast the game moves, it's no match for my infinite arsenal of lemonades. I'm a true professional in my natural habitat. I low-key just kept giving my mind's lemonade and it just kept on working. I'm just inevitable. I let myself into Colrus's living quarters and we had a battle with my team versus his machines. We packed him up and he was absolutely done for. This battle was among many that we will have to partake in, but I'm not necessarily worried about the battle with Colrus because, you know, I mean, it's challenging, but it isn't really problematic until a little bit later. I'm a bit hyped, but I'm gonna try not to get folded. There's nothing like walking right into the head of the enemy's territory so casually. Amongst my careless wandering, I eventually ran into Getsus, and this is the part where we divulge in his evil plans, and he gives me the ins and outs of their objective because that's just how it works. This man was ranting, and I was kind of just vibing, bro. Like, first five words after that, everything just kind of went into the void. This man kind of started ranting, and it was like reading a paragraph. After the first couple of words, I just kind of like pitched out just evil plan shenanigans, I guess. I had to face off with the shadow trad, and I packed them up. We was able to return the stolen life art to the homie John Wick. I enjoyed this game more so than anything because it kind of allowed for John Wick or Hugh to have that closure that he was looking for. He was able to retrieve the stolen pearl. Now that that little part was out the way, it was time for bigger and better things. Just before I get out of here, I needed to acknowledge just how cozy this little room looked, man. But yeah, we are out and it's finally time. You already know me, man. I gotta save at least 3,000 times before we reach the inside of the cave. You know, no matter how many times I play this game, something I can't help but to acknowledge is the main character is just a complete G. This man really went into this extreme danger situation. Headstrong, no hesitation, bro was bout it. You know who else was bout it? Getsus. This man was ready to claim his victory royale and he was ready to send this kid to the gulag with no hesitation. Not only that, but I feel like he was kind of successful too. He ended up freezing Opelousa and he did gain control over Kurum. And what makes matters so much funnier is that low-key these dragons, they are like capable of destroying nations. I'm talking they walk in nukes and to just be chilling. It's crazy. But what makes this scene so much more tragic is that poor Reshi Ram pulled up and he was supposed to be the ace card, man. That was supposed to be the escape plan. And he just kind of like got absorbed, man. Bro got folded. Like, to just have your secret weapon dismembered like that, it kind of just really puts things into like perspective. He got turned into a protein bar. Luckily, my team was still somewhat functional and still intact, and we went ahead and took on Kurum. There's always a catch, though, because, man, after taking out that Kurum, almost killing me was not enough for Getsus. Bro wanted all the smoke, and I was here for it. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, I did struggle a little bit on this battle, man. especially against that stupid High Dragon, because that is a monster of a dragon. I always feel like I struggle more with High Dragon than actual Kurum itself, which is crazy. I mean, to not be the man on the, to not be the face of the game, but still be more of a threat than the man... Who's really the main character? Yeah, man, I eventually got that battle up out the way with Guesses, and once that was done and over with, he just instant transmission away with a shadow triad. I talked to him, and he explained the Reshi Ram and Kira were fine. All is well for now. Bro shook on me, and John Wick came at the last moment. He let it in the fourth Hokage, but that's okay. Everything is fine because it's resolved for now. I did do a little bit of wandering around, though. I wandered around the chasm for a while in the open space that had been pretty much cleared up from the ship landing down. There was a lot of little things to go around and collect. I made a quick little pit stop at Lacanosa Town and went to the Pokemon Center, healed my team and stopped at the Mart. And man, it feels great because I'm rich. I was really out here taxing after beating them people on the Flying Dutchman, man. I got rich instead of die trying. But you know, man, the battles came at a cost because it did, it did take away from my infinite lemonade satchel. So I had to go and restock. It was kind of crazy because after a situation like that, you would think that this kid would not ever go back to the chasm in his life. But I did have to go back because I had to reach Route 23. I did a little bit of trainer battles and picked up a few little, a few little things along the way. Just as a way to take everything in, you know. I feel like this game has a lot to offer and it's baffling to be this far in it in such a short amount of time. And there we have it. Victory Road.
I talked to him and he gave me a little bit of information about what lies ahead. And I just like the, how the game really makes you take everything in, you know? It make you really put into perspective just how far you've made it in the game. So once I did start traveling up Victor Road, I had some trainer battles I had to take care of. And my biggest priority had pretty much became just training, man. I had to get ready for what lays ahead. While training, I thought it was kind of funny because I had developed the ultimate strategy for getting XP because I had found that Golurk provide the most XP. So you know what that means. Nah, training against Golurks was rough though because if they happened to be faster with whatever I was training and they used curse, it became like a suicide mission type stuff. If you don't see where I'm going with this, every time I killed the Golurk after it used curse, it would take one of my minds with it type stuff. It was like, if I'm dying, I'm taking somebody with me. So I had to keep that in mind. So if it used curse, I had to hurry up and switch it out. But I can't stress this enough. Them Golurks was low key problematic. To be constantly cursed, man, it was tough. Golurk reminds me of some type of machinery or something. It just looks as if it could fit into that steel category. I know that I had that battle with Colrus earlier, and it just seemed like Golurk would be something that Colrus would be interested in or something, you know? While traveling up Victory Road, for those of y'all that don't know, this ain't my first time playing through this. I have remembered that the one in the first game had looked completely different from the one that you go up now. And I've always kind of just wondered, like, what made them revamp Victory Road? I didn't dislike the first game's Victory Road, you know? I, I thought the mechanic of sliding up and down the mountains was cool like i appreciate both the victory roads if that makes any sense like i know i was able to experience both it don't make too much of a difference with victory road but i just appreciate both of them too you know i thought it was just kind of weird in the span of two years so much drastically changed i mean to completely revamp victory road it's something else so i ventured through the depths of victory road i traversed the forest and had to get some training up out the way this was another milestone i felt impacted this game like each trainer acted almost as the gatekeepers of the league. That was almost like a full just drop off into the immersion. Like at this point, we was really climbing to the top of the ladder, man. The ladder itself referenced towards the quote unquote end of the game. So right before I actually reached the gate, towards the actual league i had one last battle with john wick and you know it's kind of crazy because like with his character we got to kind of see an evolution through the initial purpose that john wick played throughout this story was going after that purloin that was once stolen from him it was almost like we got some closure with that character you know with the whole plasma arc and the giant chasm it was almost like you got all the branches to john wick's story and on top of these branches you got closure you know with the whole plasma arc and the giant chasm situation. You got a character who that's all he had originally wanted. He just wanted to go back and retrieve that purloin that was stolen from him and his sister. But we kind of got to see like a full change, you know? It was like once he came onto his strong team, we got to battle it out right before you went to achieve this giant accomplishment of going to the league. Gives you like a big sense of accomplishment. It's like you get closure to both these characters to an extent, you know? Like they both outgrow their purpose and that's the growth between these characters. But yeah, once I got that battle up out the way, it was pretty much just like a nostalgia hit, man. And it hit hard. This part of the game seems much more cinematic and you almost feel the stake. Almost the tension, too. I wanted my team to be all around a central level, so I dispersed a few rare candies I had found out throughout Victory Road. And not just Victory Road, too, because some of the rare candies I had, I actually ended up forgetting about them. But, hey, I mean, I guess they go into use now, you know. So to start things off, I found myself trying to be strategic throwing out Zork, but things didn't quite go to plan. So you know what I did? I just tried to keep that strategic edge, but man, it did get tough. My little team took quite the amount of damage from just that little fight. And just, I mean, you know, in typical me fashion, I was saving before each and any of these fights because unlike Iron Man, I do learn from my mistakes. Chantal and all these ghosts gotta go, man. I just was not feeling her or none of them problems. Once I got that out the way, then came Grimsley, but I have a plan. I had a plan. My backup for my backup just ended up powering through them, man. I wanted to be stylish and slip the whole team with sleeves, but life, <laughs> I don't know, life never goes to play it, I guess. But in this run, I appreciate how well-rounded my team is. And for real, for real, I want you guys to tell me what your teams were that got you through these games when y'all played through. Because I'm figuring that y'all probably played through too. And it's not just me going back, replaying through this stuff. We all can like mutually agree that these games have plenty of replay value. But on top of that replay value too, I thought that it's kind of dope how there's like, there's a super diverse pool to pick from. Like you can really kind of go in whatever direction you want as far as your team goes. So once I got that out the way, 
Kaylin was the next to the next. I had Zork as my ace, but I also had Solar Flare as my backup ace. On Solar Flare, I had Bite. That wasn't quite crunch, but it was still doing its damage too. Her team wasn't really an issue for me though, as I have pretty much all the coverages. And as far as I can tell, even if I don't, it's not nothing that I can't power through. Sometimes just powerhousing through the whole, that pain works, you know? Sometimes just powerhousing through the team just works, man. Just going through the pain, I guess. If they faint, they faint. If they don't, they don't. On to the next one. I absolutely refuse to lose my momentum. Anyways, then came Marsh. I wanted to let Swarm shine. In the end, he ended up folding. Fortunately, I was able to set up sleeves for the ultimate sweep, and we was pretty much rolling them up, man. They was folding. Until it wasn't anymore. But it was all cool, though, because even though sleeves also fainted, it wasn't like that battle didn't come to a closure. I ended up taking them out, and they was done for. And once I got Marshall out the way, I just was extremely glad because, I mean, out of all the Elite Four, for some strange reason, he's just my least favorite. I feel like, aesthetically speaking, he's boring. I think it's really hard to be more boring than somebody that's literally sleeping in a bed, but, like, it's possible, man. I don't know. He just seems kind of weak compared to everybody else. I might, I don't know, man. Tell me what y'all think. But now came the real, real smoke. I made a point to throw Dragon Tail on sleeves because, man... Any coverage was necessary for Ira, because, I mean, the amount of heat that she got with them dragons, man, I was not feeling that, man. I needed any type of coverage that I could get. But it's kind of crazy, though, because, you know, as the battle, like, progressed, it did get awkward because, like, she would throw out something, like, take, for example, Lapras. And spark plug and sleeves would be fainted, so it was just a weird, I would have to just power through it and just hope for the best, though, man. But it was cool, though, man, because, like I said, Swarm came in clutch started putting in a lot of work a lot more than what i thought it was gonna be man i was low-key expecting the hot dragon and hack service to be problems but my team was doing what they do it actually ended up going a whole lot better than what i could have ever anticipated it which i didn't think i was gonna lose but at the same time i was like bracing myself because like dealing with those mods especially from getsis i just be always mentally prepared for the worst of the worst scenarios you know which is actually interesting because I feel like that fight with Gessis is always like the most challenging fight in each of the games. Then again, I might just be biased. Just coming off that fight, you already, it's like a weird, it's like a challenging place to be in the game too, you know. But yeah though, Hydreigon and Hacksaurus are dangerous. That, I mean, for real, for her whole team is dangerous, but when your whole team is dangerous, there are outliers that are more dangerous than the rest of the dangerous, you know what I mean? But they all have it, man. We are officially in the Hall of Fame as we have beat the champion of the Universe region. You know what that makes us? The new champion of the Universe region. We are forever solidified, running off nothing but fumes and lemonade. We made it. It only cost the whole lemonade ecosystem. We was literally walking around with all the lemonade stock in our bags. But man, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. And then came the credits, and then the credits for the credits, then the credits for the credits, credits. And to be honest, after doing out, after doing everything that I just did, I think it's fair to say this game was, this game wasn't anything less than a work of passion. So man, after achieving the achievements of achievements in the league, I spawned back at sub Zeros. And from there, I talked with Cedric Junifer, and I spoke with John Wick, who congratulated me for my accomplishment at the league. Like, imagine getting recognized. We taking steps in the right direction. If only it was like this in Skyrim or Oblivion or something. But hey, look, though. But about that Zork and Victory Road, as uh, his sister proclaimed, I think it's dope how there's so much for me to do after the league. It's like in these games, you don't feel like it's just a drop off after you complete the league. You know what I mean? Kind of like the story doesn't force you to just put the game down after you defeat the league get them put a plug on you like all right bro you done you did the goal of the goal and i get off you kind of just you gradually get to pick where you go at your own pace you know it ain't really as linear you kind of it reminds me of fire red it ain't nowhere near as free as fire red but at the same sense it's like after you defeat the league you like they kind of just do your thing bro you know what i mean I made my way over to castelia and instead of going through the desert resort we kind of backpedaling but moving forward at the same time i proceeded on the sky arrow bridge where after running for a little bit, I ended up in Penwell Forest. But this time around, them levels was really catching up with me, man. <laughs> Ted, for instance, I'd be just chilling and get ran up on by little Timmy, who was just stargazing in the forest, who for some reason got like a level 65 random mind that I haven't seen since like the first 
generation like man where where these people be coming from these people low-key really be just having champion worthy teams posted up in pinwheel forest that aside though i traversed the forest with karen and we just battled it out with a whole bunch of millions and different fleets of trainers and I just, you know i can't really say too much happened at this point you know it was a couple mentions of the past games here and there but not too much you know what i mean or in other words more side quest and you know what that means man i don't got time for all that man i'm just messing with y'all because i was low-key really just chilling i actually stopped to interact with trainers which isn't really normal for me it ain't normal for me at all like i be avoiding trainers at all costs even the npc ones that don't have pokemon i still be avoiding them like the plague i mean i be navigating the pokemon world like it's real life or something i still be keeping six feet with people man but like i said though eventually me and karen pretty much cleared out the forest and we came to the opening where the dragon skull was in the first game i believe one of the sage of six i was ready to say sage of six pass one of the sages of uh Getsis ended up creeping out the cut he pretty much revealed his backstory who he was and what he was to guesses. I ain't gonna lie, man. This man guesses is really out here moving like a Rochi Maru, man. Had people willing to throw away everything, and bro was all about that smoke. If I can conclude anything about him, like as the final boss of the game, bro was definitely not to be played with. That man was willing to put everything on the line with that Carol, man. But like I said, though, all that aside, more trainers. I grabbed a couple of things, and I eventually headed towards the cream. It's weird playing these games in order, though, because my mom wants to keep telling me, like, hey, it's just level 12s in the grass. You good, you good level 12s and 15s, but it definitely was not the case, man. You go into the grass, you gonna find mines that somehow higher than you in level. Like, man, what is going on here? Pinwheel feels much more like a forest with the different diverse mines that everybody's using in these games too. You know, it's crazy because the second games that came around are a lot more refined than the first games. You know, it didn't really push Gen 5 on do you as much. Which I didn't mind Gen 5 for what it was. I thought Gen 5 was cool. A lot of people didn't like Gen 5 because they feel like they kind of just got thrown into the, the water with it. I was introduced with Gen 5, so I ain't really experienced it that much. I got the experience of being able to go back and play the older games after experiencing the, both of the Gen 5. But like I was saying though, man, I must have missed something because all these little Timmies and people just randomly having teams that are somehow hired in the league. I'm like supposed to be the champion, man. Your team is somehow hired in my like, what, what? What is going on here, man? They got super rare candies because like, no way. I refuse to accept that. That is not gonna slide. All right, so after heading up towards Nakreen, I eventually headed up Route 6 as I made my way towards White Forest. While passing through, I kind of just stopped and took a moment to just explore a little bit. It was like a science lab that I went on and went through, and I also had to just move a whole lot of different boulders around. I even found Earthquake. That's low-key an impressive ground-type move. So if you can't see where I'm going with that, I threw it onto Swarm. And if you don't already know, like I said, that's just a real, real strong ground-type move. To be honest, it sounds like an ace card, but that's for later. As I've still got a lot of training to do, man, as of right now, we just chilling. I'ma just leave the training up for future me, man. You know what I mean? But anyways, I eventually head to White Forest, and I go to White Tree Hollow. And this brought to my awareness how far I've come, but like... It's still quite a lot to do, you know what I mean? So when I went into the hollow trying to battle Banger, I was kind of sent away, man. of some side quest mission type stuff. It told me I had to go find Alder. So that's exactly what I did. I eventually made my way way back to Alder, way back to Flossessi Town, and I ended up having to go and have a little battle. I mean, could you imagine being the champion and still getting sent on side quest? But hey, it's for the plot, so I guess it can fly for now. So basically what happened is Alder got packed up and Banger pulled up after the fact and... Now we smooth because after this, I'm heading straight for the tree hollow. You know, it's an interesting point in the game because it's like I have a lot of grinding to do because my team is still like low key, like super under level. Got multiple laps to run and I started working on the hollow, slowly but surely climbing the ranks, slowly but surely climbing the floors. And like I said, I mean, I'm under level, but I just took it upon myself and I just was gaining level slowly but surely. Man, it was almost like everybody had a time skip that I just missed. You know, how like an anime, it'll be like a time skip and everybody would just be strong. Well, imagine everybody else having a time skip except you. It just is what it is, you know? I mean, I'm definitely gonna time lapse this point in the game because I'm sure y'all don't want to witness me climbing through the hollow. Cause man, that was like really, really, really time consuming. Y'all not gonna witness the suffering my team had to go through as they leveled up, man. But like I said though, it did get rough a little bit because man, my main priority had been to just get them levels. Nothing but grinding on the horizon, man. Now to avoid the mundane boredom that can arise from the repetition of the millions and millions of trainer battles in the tree hollow. I messed around and diversified my training methods. 
When it came to the higher floors in the hollow, man, I would repeatedly go through the league over and over and over along with battling these trainers. I bet you like, why? Why were you putting yourself through this much struggle? And I just, man, the levels in the higher floors, man, they were really like top tier next league type stuff, man. Not to mention the hollow is all chance. With that being said, it functions off luck. So what that means is you may get lucky and get the gate trainer right off the rip. Or you may be floors and floors and floors deep in that one area and you still have no luck finding who you're looking for. By then, your team about to die. And if your team die, you got to start all the way over. And it's luck-based, so you may go through the same process over and over again. Bro, it's completely luck-based. And you just better hope that you find the boss trainer with, within a good time frame. That's all I'm going to say. But like I said earlier, man, them trainers on them high floors was not nothing to play with because not only were they like high level, but they had real teams. So it was like they had real minds. And what I mean by that is some of them had like legendaries and stuff. Not only did they have legendaries, but they had like pseudo legendaries. And my personal opinion, the pseudo legendaries are worse than the legendaries because some legendaries are relatively garbage. But when it comes to the pseudos and you see them dragons, bro, it's raps. A lot of them was packing some real smoke in their arsenal, man. But I just was being real tactical and real strategic with when I chose to heal with the nurses. Because before finding the gate trainer, I made it a priority to look for the nurses. Because, I mean, having that one heal could come at clutch. Especially if you on the brink of death. I turned into, like, some matrix evasion skills and was avoiding trainers. When I was, like, on my last leg, relatively speaking, with my minds, man, everybody was about to die. No, sir, was I restarting. But, you know, it's interesting, though, because I went into this with, like, no prior research. I didn't know what the level cap was, and the minds just came kept on rising and rising and rising as far as levels but like i'm saying though it it somehow does manage to get worse because like them levels kept climbing i eventually did go back to the league i was thinking to myself that second time around it wasn't really quite my second time but it was one of the times after the second let's just say i was thinking i was gonna be able to just fly through it because it was like the first time it was it wasn't an issue but by the time i got around to fighting iris man it was rough i was thinking it wasn't gonna be nothing but it was straight smoke and to be honest, I was winning just by the skin of my teeth when going through them league fights. At this point, you probably like, bro, just go ahead and hang the tile up. But like, I'm in too deep. There is no turning around at this point. All right, man. So to give like a break from all the grinding I was doing, I wanted to change the scenery. So I did a little bit of wandering. I went back to the first couple of routes of the first games. And I also got the bright idea to go ahead and finish exploring Victory Road. And so I went. I went into a small crevice where I battled a veteran. It was a cave full of Drudigans and Zoelius's. I had no intention of getting the Hydreigon, but I went ahead and still called me a Zoelius. Because, I mean, why not, you know? Just going ahead and having that firepower in my pocket. Because, you know, I just never you can never have too many dragons, I guess. But low-key, man. And I just I was kind of just hanging out in this cave and if I'm not mistaken too this was the cave where there was the tax evading Zord so I went on my pursuit and I followed bro all the way down to Inn's castle you know it wasn't very eventful we kind of just wandered around the castle it was like it was flashbacks and I guess nostalgia for those of y'all that played through it I played through it before so it was like drawbacks to the first game I mean yeah you know we were just wandering around <laughs> wandering around this dude's house his castle got to fight his pet Reshi Ram, which I ended up defeating after the defeat I ended up getting my Myself a light stone, so I guess I have a whole Reshi Ram in my bag. So I had to take a voyage from Opelousa and I also had to traverse the two blind bridge. And you know, to be honest, to put things into perspective, like in the Pokemon universe, you a tiny dude and you got these huge semis under you, which ain't really too far off from actual reality, but it just, you don't really realize how small you are. Like in these games, you a, you a little kid. But once I finally reached Route 8, I had actually sat there and I had to go through more filler arcs. And you know, the packing up of these trainers was inevitable because I did finally reach Osiris. Put it quite simply, I bought it straight for the dragon spiral tower it's crazy how much i can we be making these little people do man like i'd be out here i'm like a super athlete at this point this little dude i'm playing as can low-key like compete with lebron as far as genetics go but aside from the fact that this little dude is a super athlete i had to kind of just traverse through the dragon spiral tower it was a whole lot of climbing i had to do i had to maneuver through a lot of different mazes and i just had to do a whole lot of just like man i was pretty much to make like to be honest i just was on the move man it was a whole just a lot of abandoned building it was a lot of like ruckus and just stuff in the way it was a lot of obstacles and after going through all that i finally reached the top once i got up there i went ahead and took my magical rock and i summoned reshiram reshiram was relatively easy to catch because i managed to catch him with a trusty old pokeball just had to go with my simple old, you know, just the fact that I caught him with a Pokeball was just kind of crazy. Like, it just suits the whole atmosphere of the castle, you know what I mean? He wasn't a hassle to catch, and I was forever grateful. And then N eventually came up and started talking like Thanos. I think N as a character was dope because he kind of, like, was bouncing back and forth between, like, hero and villain dynamic. 
his character arc really had you out here thinking, man. His character arc really had you out here thinking, like, who was in the right, who was in the wrong. But the biggest question I had was, was I going to be able to jump out of the spiral tower like N was in the other games? Was I going to have the ability to do that animation or just was they going to... They're gonna hate on me and restrict me, man. With a little bit more thinking, I eventually chose not to do that and I made my way out of the tower. And now for the chasm I bolted for. Alright, so you know, I didn't really keep like a particular order as to how I was doing things. So I did like a lot of jumping back and forth between the tree hollow, training at the league. I was pretty much kind of just back on my XP grind. I was doing whatever I could just to get those extra levels because like towards the higher levels of the tree, it was just it got dangerous, man. People had legendaries. It was strong dragons in use. Just man, everybody had smoke in their arsenal. Is what I'm saying. Before I ended up proceeding onwards, I ended up going back to Undella Town, where I went and stumbled into that house that gave me nightmares so many years ago. Kind of under a rock. The house is the house that Cynthia was in. But you know, I didn't really have worries about taking on that battle because I was pretty much I reached that point to where I wasn't level 100, but there wasn't really a lot in the game that really worried me. Now, I mean. If I was to go into this battle with no type of strategy at all, I could have absolutely got folded. But I have a basic understanding of the game mechanics, so it wasn't really as much of a, a traumatic experience as it was that first time I stumbled upon this house on accident, man. I was pretty much ready. I was able to sweep through the fight. Now, it was not as easy as it seems, but it, you know, it wasn't as bad as what it could have been. Not only that battle, but also mixed in with a couple league run-throughs. I just I was just racking up levels now to the point to where I was pushing like mid 80s but like I was saying though man after I ended up clearing the floors of trainers and I eventually ended up beating Banga too I've never completed the tree hollow out of all the times I done played through this game I, there was absolutely no way I was fumbling that cuz dude it was like four different floors I could have found the gate trainer when I got really lucky I was really happy when it happened man that was the first time I ever did that and I ended up having to go back to Otter's house where I was able to claim my Dratini, which was shiny. I wanted to get at least one shiny this run. I don't know if I want to count that though. There's a part of me that wants to find one. It's like, I have to find it myself, which that Dratini definitely wasn't a free Dratini, man. It was a lot of grinding I had. To. Regardless though, I'll take it. And I also ended up naming him Draco. So Draco, the green Dragonite, what he's gonna turn into. With that being said, though, I eventually worked my way up. It was like a whole lot of trainers. And I believe it was, once I reached area 10, it was like four different levels. To, it was just four levels of trainers, and it was just a huge area to cover. I ended up getting extremely lucky, and I got Banga super, super early on. Like, whenever I was battling trainers, I messed around and found the gate trainer on Axe. Man, I made my way to Route 20 in order to head to the Lake Trio Cave and re-experience this almost made me want to start a platinum. To be honest, that ain't even too far-fetched because, like, like I said, man, it just depends on how well this does. So y'all gotta do y'all's thing. Anyways, I conversed with Juniper in this cave and I went on my quest to hunt for the Lake Trio. I headed over to that museum from the first game with the dragon skull and the cream. I duked it out with a ooks. Once bro was caught, I headed over to the dream yard and triggered the ultimate game of tag, which resulted in me catching the laddies. Once that was done, I headed to the Mistraughton Tower and I caught a mess for it in the middle of its emo monologue. Then once that was done and over with, I ended up going to Route 23 and headed to catch the Zelf. And it, you know, to be honest, it wasn't hard to catch at all. Like. I was thinking this trio was gonna be problematic, but the only thing that was only like halfway problematic was Ooks. And it wasn't even like super just annoying to catch. But you know, they was relatively chill as a trio. Once that was done and over with came the next set of trios, which involved me heading close to the giant chasm on Route 13. I ended up catching the Cobalion extremely easily, might I mention. It was weird because I was expecting like three seasons of filler arc worth of throwing Pokeballs, but you know, he was relatively easy to catch. Now for the next in the trio, I had to go to Route 11. This is where the filler arc ended up taking place. For some reason, I had a really hard time catching Verizzi. Like, I spent at least an hour trying to catch this man. Like, his mind is over here behaving like it ain't like a D-list legendary. I don't got time for that, man. No, nobody got time to be throwing. Like, man. I joke aside, I just thought it was interesting, man, because it was out here moving like it was the face of the game. Like, I could understand if it was Kiram or Reshi Ram or something being hard to catch, but nah, it had to be Verizzi. Route 22 ended up coming and going, caught me a Terrakian. It was much easier to catch than Verizzi, but I ain't even take it personally. Then came the clay tunnel, and I'll tell you, I went on a journey, passageways and passageways. And to be honest, I was just moving. The only thing I knew how to do was go forward. I had absolutely no idea where I was going. It was just maze, maze, maze. 
I just was talking to the little construction people down there and luckily I did end up in the chamber where I needed to go. And you know, to be honest, I was fortunate because I had like a grasp of the way puzzle worked with the switches because I had already played through it a couple times in the past, but it's been like years. So I kind of, I, I remember my first time playing through, I didn't have no idea what I was doing. And you know, what makes it even funnier is not only did I not know what I was doing, but I found the switches on accident. In this game, these puzzles were bad, but I feel like they could have been much worse. They was like easy for like the casual player to understand and get a hang of. But anyways, I proceeded to do the, the series of steps and I hit the switch and I ended up getting the ancient room with Reggie Rock, who I ended up catching. Once I caught Reggie Rock, I got a key to the iceberg chamber. If the iceberg chamber ain't super foreshadowing as the West coming, I don't really know what what to like get the message through to you. I had to restart my game to initiate the ice chamber so I could be able to catch me a reg. Reg ice was hard to catch, believe it or not. I had like a hard time catching reg ice. I was sitting there throwing pokeballs at it for quite some time, I felt like. And not only that, but I actually ended up fainting. So I had to restart my game again. This is why you gotta save before you go into these battles. I luckily have never KO'd a legendary for getting to save, but I know some people that have. And I don't wanna wish that pain on nobody. That's almost like having a shiny self-destruct on you. Like there's absolutely nothing you could do. <laughs> But I though, with that being said, I caught the Reg Ice. And then I proceeded to evacuate the underground room. I just felt like I, I just went far underground or something. I was just in the passageways. Once I got out of there, I headed straight for the giant chasm because now it was time to catch Kira. And I felt it was only right when so with a Reshi Ram. Yeah, though, man, like I was saying, I could understand Reshi Ram and Kira being hard to catch because they actually the face of the game. No disrespect to Marizian, but man, these minds is moving like they the main mascot. Like, all jokes aside, it was cool though, cause it kinda gave me like, I wasn't really trying to like fast forward, I wanted to just take a moment to just enjoy the game for what it was, cause this game is meant to be played in that sense. I don't really like rushing through these games, it's cool to complete them, but at the same time, once you beat them, it's like, dang. And they kinda put so much into this game too, so it's like, just take it easy with it, man. But Kiram wasn't too much of a hassle. But to be honest, Kiram kinda was a hassle, cause bro kept on sealing all my moves. I couldn't really do nothing, cause all of my moves ended up being sealed. It just kept on spamming that imprison move, it was tough. It became like a weird anime, it became like a stare off. But yeah, once I finally did catch that Kiram, I fused it with Reshu Ram, and I couldn't really believe that I was like, nearing the ending. And I say that with a grain of salt because there was still a little bit that I had made the decision not to do. But as far as like the main aspect of what I was trying to accomplish with the game, I felt like I had got a majority of it done. Not only that, but it dawned upon me that I had forgotten the whole legendary that I was supposed to catch. And this was like after the fact, after I went through and recorded, and that was Heatran. So months and months and months later, I ventured up to Route 18, grabbed the Magma Stone, and ran at light speed over to the Reversal Mountain to catch me a Heatran. And you know, it had to be problematic as like my send off to the game. There was absolutely no way Heatran was gonna be easy to catch. So I spent a nice amount of time throwing Pokeballs at this Heatran trying to catch it. I'm like, man, why do I feel like I'm really catching like something that's really, really, I ain't trying to hate on Heatran, but. And I just, you know, I refuse to use my Master Ball on something like that. That's specifically for a shiny if I decide to hunt or accidentally find one. After Heatran was caught, that was kind of where I wanted to stop with the game. I felt like I had accomplished everything that I wanted to do. The White Tree Hollow, which I'd never done before. I ran through the league. I got my minds to mid 80s. I had me a nice little team. I started from like really, really low. Just work my way up. This is probably the furthest I've ever progressed in these games. Now, I, I didn't get to catch every last legendary that was available because I didn't really know how to trade in my given situation that I chose to emulate this on. That being said, it was a couple legendaries I missed out on. That's fine because, you know, they're like version exclusive. And that kind of begs the question of, is this game still worth playing? Like, how well does Pokemon White 2 still hold up? To answer that question with as little bias as possible, I feel like this game is the full package as far as a Pokemon game goes. Gen 5, I mean, I feel like had all the aspects of the Pokemon game that you could want. I didn't really feel as if it was super linear. You had a lot of space to kind of go about doing everything you wanted to do with that, like, nostalgic edge to it. It was, it was a cool experience. I'm not gonna lie, if you played through this expecting it to be, like, the very first time you played through, it won't. That's not really fair to expect, you know, but at the same time, I feel like if you played this when you was younger, it'd be something cool to experience once again. Like, I had a lot of fun replaying through this, even though I played through this a lot when I was a lot younger. Not only that, but considering I'm much older, it wasn't really a lot of points in the game where I was just like, man, this is really, really dope. Other than like the Pokestar Studios, but I don't know nobody that enjoys doing that part of the game. 
that was the reason I chose to cut that out of the gameplay itself. But I'm not going to bash that too much because I just personally, that ain't really for me. I just like the core aspect of the Pokemon game. And that's kind of pretty much what I decided to put in. So, yes, there's still a little bit of things I didn't do. But as far as like the main game itself, I definitely feel like if you're thinking about picking this game up, you want to re-experience it. Go ahead, man. It's a dope game. It's a dope experience. I'm going to leave it up to y'all to decide which version y'all like more. Y'all lean more towards white 2 or black 2. I'm a fan of both the dragons, so you know I could go either way. But with all that being said, man, like it's up. Share this with your homies. This took me quite some time to make. Depending upon how well this does, that'll kind of decide whether or not I ever do something like this again. So I'm going to let y'all speak. And until next time, man, I hope y'all enjoyed this as much as I did. Peace.